Hello everyone, and welcome back to Placeology. I'm Megan. And I'm Andrew. And today we're leaning into the macabre a little bit, in the spirit of the spooky season, and talking about a kind of place with a little less hustle and bustle than usual, cemeteries. Right. If you love exploring cities and places like we do, and especially if you're into history, chances are you've stumbled upon a cemetery or two in your travels. They're in big cities, they're in the middle of nowhere, they're all around us in every community, and what they look like can vary quite a bit from one to another. There's varying reasons for that, of course, and in this video we're exploring several of these different styles by picking out 12 U.S. cemeteries that we consider a must-visit. Unlike our ranking videos, where we might use more of a formula or certain criteria to decide things, for this video we just tried to choose a good sampling of different locations and styles to represent the cemeteries you can find in America. We drew on our own experience, too, as we've both done quite a bit of research on cemeteries and visited over half of these ourselves. So, without further ado, let's get started. Kicking things off with the oldest on our list, we have Granary Burying Ground in the heart of Boston, Massachusetts. Obviously, Massachusetts is an incredibly important part of the early American history that led to what is now the United States, and being its capital city, Boston is full of historic sites. Most of these sites have been organized into stops on what is known as the Freedom Trail, and Granary Burying Ground is one of them. It's an especially important one, too. Granary is Boston's third oldest cemetery, dating all the way back to 1660. In the cemetery, you'll see what some of America's earliest graves looked like, including the graves of several well-known patriots like John Hancock, Samuel Adams, and Paul Revere. Five victims of the Boston Massacre are there, too, as well as three signers of the Declaration of Independence. In total, there are about 2,500 grave markers in the cemetery, and more than twice as many people actually buried there. For the next stop on our list, we're not leaving Boston, but instead hopping just across the Charles River to a much larger location than the last, Mount Auburn Cemetery. So, a common trend among cities in the late 1800s and early 1900s was to stop the growth of cemeteries in the center of the city in order to save space. Some cities took this farther than others, like San Francisco, where they not only banned cemeteries, but actually took a vote and ended up removing all of the graves that existed in the city and reburying them elsewhere. So, what was the destination for new and future burials once they were kicked out of the city centers? The suburbs, or since the suburb wasn't really a concept yet, it was more like the rural areas at the edge of the city sprawl. That's where we find Boston's Mount Auburn, and it played a central role in this process as it was the first cemetery in the country known as a garden cemetery, and actually changed the concept of what a cemetery is in a lot of ways. Aside from having no affiliation with a church or as a government-run burying ground, which was a first, the garden cemetery concept combined a traditional cemetery with a public park with the intent of people using it to go for a jog or to escape the city and experience nature. Mount Auburn is 174 acres in size and is home to well over 100,000 burials. Some famous, yes, like Henry Wadsworth Longfellow and Oliver Wendell Holmes, but in general, Mount Auburn makes this list, not because of its famous residence, but because of how important the cemetery itself is. It's well known nationally for its history and for its horticulture and wildlife, and is listed on the National Register of Historic Places as an important bird area by Massachusetts Audubon, and most notably as a National Historic Landmark. Once again, we're headed not too far away, over a couple of towns, to Sleepy Hollow Cemetery in Concord, Massachusetts. This cemetery was designed in 1855 and is a definite bucket list item for any literary lovers out there because it is most well known for the famous burials in the so-called Author's Ridge. Nathaniel Hawthorne, Louisa May Alcott, Ralph Waldo Emerson, and Henry David Thoreau. Aside from their obviously famous works of literature, these names are also associated with the Transcendentalism movement, and that is very much intertwined with the cemetery here. Not only were the designers of the cemetery part of the movement, but just like with Mount Auburn, they reflected it in their design by emphasizing the natural elements of the land and focusing on how it could be used and enjoyed by the living. Oh, and if you're wondering about the Sleepy Hollow name, it is not the same Sleepy Hollow as the legend that you probably know, but that does lead us to the next stop on our must-visit list. Over one state and down the Hudson River, Sleepy Hollow Cemetery in Sleepy Hollow, New York is our next stop, and it is the cemetery associated with the legend. That's right. Washington Irving's famous story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, takes place right here in the technically separate but connected Old Dutch Church Burial Ground. We all know the story, the Headless Horseman, Ichabod Crane, and so on, and here in Sleepy Hollow they don't shy away from it, with a statue of the Headless Horseman and even the occasional reenactment event around Halloween. Sleepy Hollow Cemetery is center stage to all of this, and Washington Irving himself is buried here. Go check out our video on the best places to visit in the fall where we also feature Sleepy Hollow. 
There's more to the cemetery than just legend, though. Tons of notable figures were buried in the gorgeous 90 acres, especially including big names from the Gilded Age, like Walter Chrysler, Andrew Carnegie, and members of the Astor and Rockefeller families. Lots of politicians, too, and several of Alexander Hamilton's children, for any <laughs> Hamilton fans. Headed a few miles farther south, we head to the Big Apple and my personal favorite on our list, Greenwood Cemetery in the heart of Brooklyn, New York. And while you'd expect a cemetery in the middle of New York City to be on the smaller side, quite the opposite is the case. Greenwood is the second biggest on our list at a staggering 478 acres. It is a National Historic Landmark and is probably the biggest and best example of a park-like cemetery in the country. The design of the cemetery is truly breathtaking, with rolling hills that have mausoleums built into the side, a large canopy of trees casting shadows over most of the cemetery, and most noteworthy of all is the architecture. The Gothic Revival entrance gate to the cemetery is itself a New York City landmark, and the greenhouse, mausoleums, and chapel inside the cemetery are also gorgeous. The cemetery contains the highest point in Brooklyn, known as Battle Hill, and does have quite a few famous burials among its 600,000, including Leonard Bernstein, Louis Comfort Tiffany, and John michel Basquiat. In 1866, the New York Times said that it is the ambition of the New Yorker to live upon Fifth Avenue, to take his airings in the Central Park, and to sleep with his fathers in Greenwood. This remains true even today, with Greenwood now a classic and storied part of the New York experience. We've mentioned before that Greenwood was the second largest cemetery on our list, and here's the reason why. Arlington National Cemetery. Located right across the Potomac River from Washington, D.C., Arlington is perhaps the most well-known cemetery in the country and is a whopping 639 acres. It's a true bucket list stop for many reasons, like taking in the rich American history, visiting the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, or just generally paying respects to the late veterans, including some particularly famous ones. Obviously, all of the graves in Arlington hold a particular importance, but some of the ones that typically attract a touristy crowd include the Kennedy family graves, John and Jackie plus Robert and Ted, as well as the nearby section of Supreme Court justices including Thurgood Marshall and Ruth Bader Ginsburg. President William Howard Taft is buried in Arlington as well, making it the resting place of two presidents. Visually, the most striking thing about Arlington is the rows and rows of matching white gravestones in perfect alignment with each other. This is the standard look of the national cemeteries across the country, of which there are 155. Heading a bit farther south, number 7 on our list is Magnolia Cemetery in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, earlier in this video when talking about Boston, we mentioned the cities that tended to kick cemeteries out of the central areas during the 1800s. This was the case here in Charleston, and when visiting Magnolia, you'll notice it is actually one of several cemeteries all clustered together in the neck area of the Charleston Peninsula. Despite being nestled among several others, though, Magnolia is no typical cemetery. It's more than 130 acres in size and contains several ponds, large oak trees with dangling Spanish moss, and several unique and interesting mausoleums that contain the graves of Charleston elite. The cemetery opened in 1850 and, as you might expect, there are some sizable sections of Civil War veteran graves in the cemetery. One spot that's definitely worth visiting is the graves of the H.L. Hunley crew, a Confederate submarine that sank during battle in 1862. The wreck wasn't found and recovered until 2000, and the crew was then buried here at Magnolia. Aside from the Hunley crew and some South Carolina politicians, though, there aren't a ton of quote-unquote famous graves here in Magnolia, but the architecture and grounds are certainly worth the visit. You'll almost certainly spot some wildlife, especially large birds like cranes and heron. The cemetery is one of the most picturesque on our list, and having lived in the Charleston area ourselves for several years, we're quite familiar with it. Just down the coast from Magnolia Cemetery is Bonaventure Cemetery in Savannah, Georgia. Similar to how Charleston and Savannah are often compared as cities due to proximity, similar size, and history, Magnolia and Bonaventure can almost be seen as sister cemeteries to each other. Both cemeteries had their first burials in 1850, and they are similar in size, with Bonaventure only slightly larger than Magnolia at 160 acres. Both cemeteries are also known for their gorgeous mossy trees, which famous naturalist John Muir called the most magnificent planted trees he'd ever seen when visiting Bonaventure in 1867. Where Bonaventure is most unique, though, is the intricate sculptures and funerary art that have brought the cemetery recognition and publicity. The New York Times best-selling book Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Barrent prominently features the Bird Girl statue in Bonaventure Cemetery on the cover, and some events in the book even involve the cemetery. That specific statue has since been relocated, but there are still so many worth visiting at Bonaventure, like the statue of a little girl named Gracie and several large angels. So while most of our list has admittedly been East Coast heavy, there are still plenty of interesting and historic cemeteries toward the west, and we start heading that way here with number 9, St. Louis Cemetery No. 1 in New Orleans, Louisiana. We specify number 1 because there are technically three parts of St. Louis Cemetery, each a few blocks from the others. 
Dating back to 1789, number one is the oldest cemetery in the city of New Orleans and is the most important to visit, but all three are interesting and likely worth your time when visiting this city. What makes the cemeteries of New Orleans so interesting is that due to an 1803 city ordinance that aimed to combat flooding and issues with the city being below sea level, many burials in the city are above ground in tombs. This style of cemetery can be found throughout Europe, particularly France and Spain, but in the U.S. is only really found here in New Orleans and is the subject of a lot of interest, particularly as it relates to the local culture. The supposed grave of voodoo queen Marie Laveau here in St. Louis Cemetery No. 1, for example, is one of the most visited spots, even though tours of the cemetery were limited in 2015 after a rise in vandalism. Other famous graves in the cemetery include architect Benjamin Latrobe and Supreme Court case plaintiff Homer Plessy, while a future resident of the cemetery is actor Nicolas Cage, who purchased a pyramid tomb in 2010. The cemetery is on the National Register of Historic Places, as well as the Louisiana African American Heritage Trail. All right, strap on those boots and put on your cowboy hat because number 10 is in the wild, wild west, Boot Hill Cemetery in Tombstone, Arizona. A Boot Hill Cemetery is a term associated with the wild west of the 19th and 20th centuries, with the term referring to the notorious gunslingers having, quote, died with their boots on. There are several other Boot Hill Cemeteries that are also well known, such as in Deadwood, South Dakota, and Dodge City, Kansas, but the one in Tombstone is arguably the most famous, despite only containing about 250 graves. Among those 250 graves are several wild and storied individuals, most famously including the three men killed at the 1881 shootout at the OK Corral. What makes their graves and others in Boot Hill so visually interesting is how the desert landscape impacts the cemetery, rock-covered graves on a grassless ground. Graves are marked by tall, thin stones and others by wooden crosses, all with handwritten inscriptions. It's not a style of cemetery that you're likely to find anywhere else, and that's exactly why it makes this list. Before we move on to our last two spots, make sure to subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more place-based content like this, and make sure to leave us a comment too with what topics you'd like us to tackle next. The last two cemeteries on our list finally reach the West Coast, with number 11 being Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Hollywood, Los Angeles, California. This cemetery has a long and complicated history beginning with its founding in 1899 as Hollywood Cemetery, but the bottom line is that this cemetery is the final resting place for a lot of celebrities, from old Hollywood to the present day. Just to name a few of the hundreds of celebrities here, we have Judy Garland, Estelle Getty, Mickey Rooney, Rudolph Valentino, Jane Mansfield, Johnny and Dee Dee Ramon, and Chris Cornell. Several of the most well-known graves are centered around the pond at one side of the cemetery, as well as in the mausoleum. If you're interested in learning more about the famous names at Hollywood Forever, we recommend checking out the YouTube channel called Hollywood Graveyard. It's one of our favorites! But even setting the famous names aside, Hollywood Forever Cemetery is deserving of a spot on our list because of how it isn't just a cemetery, but also a gathering and event space for the community. As the cemetery's website puts it, they host a range of events including outdoor classic film screenings, concerts, literature events, lectures, live podcast tapings, and more, along with the largest Dia de los Muertos event in the U.S. And indeed, this importance as a community gathering place has worked its way into popular culture itself. It has been featured in episodes of American Horror Story and is home to a scene from the movie Valentine's Day. The last cemetery on our list is Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. So you've probably heard of the Forest Lawn name associated with California and is a popular cemetery for celebrities. There are actually six cemeteries in California's overall Forest Lawn chain, but Glendale's is the original and the flagship location. Glendale's Forest Lawn Memorial Park was founded in 1906 and taken over in 1912 by Hubert Eaton, who is credited as the cemetery's founder. Eaton is credited with pioneering the cemetery's memorial park concept of all flat grave markers. While Forest Lawn wasn't necessarily the first to use this concept, it was one of the most influential in popularizing the concept, which spread around the Los Angeles area and across the country. Forest Lawn Glendale contains many of the elements that you're probably familiar with from your local memorial park, like a large mausoleum and sections of flat grave markers with names like Garden of Memories. But Forest Lawn is also on a pretty large scale at 300 acres and is in many ways like the garden cemeteries mentioned earlier in this video. The massive Great Mausoleum has 11 terraces and 100 stained glass windows. It's so large that it was built with the same amount of steel and concrete as a 70-story skyscraper. There are also several chapels on the Forest Lawn grounds, which have played host to funerals as well as weddings, such as that of Ronald Reagan and Jane Wyman in 1940. All of this is certainly interesting about Forest Lawn, but let's talk about the main attraction for visitors, the celebrities. Clark Gable, Walt Disney, Humphrey Bogart, Mary Pickford, Nat King Cole, Sammy Davis Jr., Louis L'Amour, Carol Lombard, and L. Frank Baum are just a few of the household names buried at Forest Lawn Glendale. 
There really is no other cemetery in the U.S. with as many well-known burials as this one, and for that reason alone, it is worth your time on a visit to L.A. All right, that's it for this video. Let us know if you agree with the 12 cemeteries we chose as must-visits, and if there's any others that you think we should have included. We hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time!